As uh, Anthony mentioned, I'm um, Eugenia Vidal Casanovas. I'm an architect and open space planner at the metropolitan area of Barcelona. The metropolitan area of Barcelona uh, has different competences and carries out uh, different actions in relation to climate change. For example, endorsement and partnerships uh, like the uh, Covenant of Mayors initiative. Recently, we have declared the climate emergency just last April. We do uh, and support research, we do awareness activities and then projects such as the network of uh, metropolitan climate uh, shelters or the biosolar roof uh, program. And then we do plans as well, uh, specific plans like the low carbon strategy or the climate and energy uh, plan 2030. And then we do what we call physical or uh, spatial planning that uh, incorporates as well proposals that uh, works in this direction of uh, mitigation and adaptation and of having a more resilient territory. I'm going to focus exclusively on this kind of uh, plants, what we call urban plants. The presentation is structured in three parts. First, I'm going to give you uh, some information about the context, uh, our, about our territory. Then I'm going to give you a glimpse of our vision for a green metropolis. And finally, we'll focus on the plants. And through them, I'm going to try to answer some of the questions posted by the uh, conference. The metropolitan area of Barcelona comprises 36 uh, municipalities. It produces half of the GDP of Catalonia and it's home uh, to a population of over 3 million people in a scarcely uh, 640 square kilometers. This is a huge density, but despite this density, uh, only 48% of the territory is actually uh, developed, urbanized. The rest are big, uh, more or less natural areas, such forest areas, agricultural land, and, and so on. These areas coincide with important geographical features, such as the coastal range, the two rivers, the, the beaches. And together with these large areas, we have uh, other green areas of a more urban character, such as the uh, squares, streets, and a myriad of interstitial green uh, spaces. All together, the large and the more urban, they make up an interconnected network of green spaces that are of great ecological and landscape value. It's what we call the green infrastructure. What we are trying to, to attempt here at AMB is to put this green infrastructure at the center of the key decisions for the future of the metropolis. We are putting green infrastructure at the forefront and we are trying to reinforce the interconnection of these spaces. Uh, we are trying to uh, ensure biodiversity and the biological process that uh, take place. We are trying to promote ecosystem services, regulate uh, disturbances, etc. And very important, we are trying to have the green permeate the, the city. Eugenia, um, just give me one second. It, it would appear from the comments in the chat yes. that your presentation isn't moving on in the slides. We're still on the first slide. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Yes, I'm already like half the presentation. Um, so you, you you might you might be better. There we are. We're okay. we're moving we're moving now. Okay, leave you to it. Okay, so I'm, I'm so sorry to hear that uh, the, the slide was uh, frozen. So uh, I'm going to pass the images that I just uh, comment on and I'm going to use this mode of PowerPoint. It's not so great, but at least you, you can see the images. I'm so sorry for the technical uh, issues. Uh, this is the index, the, how the presentation is structured, our um, territory. Uh, here I was talking about the, uh, our uh, vision for a green metropolis and the different kind of spaces. 
And I was just uh, starting to, to mention that uh, we have brought three different urban plans. One is Pinta Verda uh, in Catalan Green Com, the other is Petnat, uh, that is the actual uh, preservation plan for the cultural and natural park. And then there's the PDU, that is the future master plan for the entire metropolitan uh, area. The, uh, oops, sorry, okay. The green. Uh, the green com uh, is a structuring model uh, plan that is reorganizing the city of uh, Santa Coloma de Gramenet from its public space. And uh, it connects through the public space, the different neighborhoods and the river with the forest uh, areas. And the structure is based on certain streets that coincide with all streams. These streams, unfortunately, are now um, underground uh, inside pipelines. Uh, the project has a very straightforward origin uh, since it arose uh, from the need to fix some planning and ownership issues. Mostly the problem was that there were uh, pending uh, expropriations on uh, planned green areas that the public administration could not assume. And then we had uh, some uh, planned green areas in locations that they were not very convenient. And then we had some mismatches as well between the actual users and the planned users. So, the the new concept for the city rearranges the the cities uh, the green areas in a way that is more coherent with the uh, geography and, and the shape of the of the city. This kind of uh, model uh, plans needs, of course, uh, construction work to be implemented, and they need sometimes more detailed plans in order to be. Uh, Develop. Uh, since its approval in 2015, the municipality was able to uh, reorganize a few streets and to get uh, such detailed plans uh, approved. You can see some images on the screen. Uh, the Pinta Verde brought some uh, immediate and we hope long run uh, benefits. And uh, for the topic of the conference, we would like to highlight how it prioritizes pedestrian use over motor vehicle uh, use on the, on the streets, reducing uh, tra transit. And then uh, how it helps mitigate water runoff and it counteracts uh, the heat island effect by introducing more vegetation, more green inside the city. As for the, the questions that, that the conference were, uh, was posting, uh, which advice, uh, how to persuade? I, I think that there are two key questions here. Uh, it was very helpful uh, to have kind of a motto of a slogan, this engaging image of the Green Con, and then the dissemination and participatory approach uh, that uh, far exceeds uh, what is uh, established uh, by, by law, the minimum established by law. Then for the funding requirements and the economic co-benefits, it was key the involvement of private stakeholders so we could solve this problem with the uh, expropriations. It is a very singular plan in the sense that it meant uh, a saving uh, on part of the administration of uh, over uh, 50 uh, million euros uh, with this rearrangement of green areas. And it, it not only uh, um, it improved their functionality, but we were able to increase the surface of green areas inside the city with over uh, uh, 27,000 uh, square uh, meters. And for the co-benefits, um, it's uh, more difficult to estimate, but we have seen an improvement in the local commerce, the local shops are benefiting uh, from, from this kind of operations. And then there's the improvement in health and well-being that in the long run is a saving for the administration as well. 
The second example, the Colcerola uh, Natural Park Plan that we call uh, PEPNAT. It's uh, uh, an environmental and urban plan that is a direct consequence of the declaration of uh, Colcerola uh, as a natural park. This park, as you can see on the image, uh, is quite strategic in the sense that it's located in the middle of the metropolis. This means high social pressure and it means uh, ecolog ecological uh, isolation as well. Uh, the, the plan is the result of the combined effort of uh, several administrations and key stakeholders. It is based on two fundamental principles. One, of course, is the ensuring of biodiversity and the other is the promotion of ecosystem services. All of this within a framework of an adaptive and dynamic management. Um, for today's uh, discussion, we would like to highlight uh, how um, one of the main proposals is this uh, simplification of uh, planning. There's only one zoning code. But then we have a protocol and a set of indicators to uh, monitor and to uh, follow up the state of the park in order to be able to adapt its management to the changing situation of the territory and to the projected uh, climate change uh, scenarios. Other proposals had to do with the low carbon strategy and with the co-management and co-responsibility plans for the um, forest areas that are privately owned, because around 60% of the, of the park is, is private. Uh, for the, in relation to the advice or how to persuade, here we see again the importance of um, explaining the plan and uh, trying to have uh, our uh, citizens and key stakeholders involved in the, in the drafting of the, of the plan. And the uh, difference with uh, Santa Coloma is the co-governance of the plan. Uh, it's very um, complex space where um, different interests uh, um, coincide. And uh, it was a, a key, a key, a key issue uh, for having it uh, approved. Um, the different administrations were organized in different institutional and technical uh, commissions. This took more time, but at the end, uh, it was um, vital. Uh, another aspect is the integral approach, since th there are a uh, few specific proposals in terms of climate change, but uh, the, the idea is that uh, the, the most important uh, principles and almost all the pro proposals contribute to, to this aim in one way or, or, or another. And another uh, for the funding requirements and uh, benefits, again, we see the involvement of private owners here in a different manner, more in the participatory process and in the, and we hope, in the co-management of, of the park. And it is fundamental for the cultural uh, uh, range to realize that here we have a public consortium that it has an annual budget. So the plan has an economic agenda and the investment uh, needed is uh, listed. The projects are prioritized over a 15 year uh, horizon and it be mostly paid by the, by the public. Although there's a small part that uh, the big companies present in the park will have uh, to take responsibility um, for. And uh, last but not least, there's the PDU, the Future Master Plan. We just uh, got in 2019 the preliminary ideas uh, approved, and we hope to have the first draft uh, next year. It's a strategic uh, plan with guidelines and objectives for the development of the metropolitan, the metropolitan area in the next 20 years. It, look at, it looks 
at six uh, different thematic uh, areas under complex relationships. These areas are uh, where we have competences and they range from green infrastructure to transport uh, mobility infrastructure and, and so on. You can see here uh, at the bottom of the, of the screen in terms. One of the main objectives is uh, to mitigate uh, emissions and to adapt to the climate change effects and to have a more resilient territory. And the fulfillment of this uh, objective Again, uh, it has an integral approach and, and we hope to achieve it by uh, fulfilling the other objectives such as uh, an active and sustainable um, mobility. It's a very complex uh, plan. We, it's a work in progress. I just brought one of the proposals to better understand the kind of work that we, we are doing. This is the Green Corridors. Green corridors are urban strips uh, with a high presence of vegetation that cross the urban fabric and connect different metropolitan uh, areas. There are three basic sections according uh, to the density of the urban, urban fabric. Uh, some of these um, access coincide with already existing green access but most of them will be new. Uh, we have uh, already um, uh, detected 750 kilometers of uh, um, streets and roads that could uh, potentially become uh, green, green corridors. And again, uh, dissemination and participation uh, is very uh, key. Uh, then the integral approach that I just mentioned. Here uh, we would like to highlight as well the testing and scaling. Testing as for example in the Green Corridor case uh, we are already um, implementing some of these ideas and uh, uh, trying to learn from what we, we are doing in order to adjust the proposal uh, in the in the master plan and scaling in in the sense that uh, what we think it works in for example Pinta Verda or Pepnat we are scaling it up for the entire metropolitan area. As for the funding requirements and uh, local co benefits, uh, it's uh, we are still working on, on this plan, so it's not. Uh, um, precisely defined yet, but uh, we would like to highlight our approach towards green infrastructure that uh, not only looks at environmental issues or social issues, but we are um, trying to make the most of the green infrastructure from an economic point of view as well. And here the um, future master plan is uh, looking very carefully to the promotion of the agroforest uh, mosaic. And to conclude, uh, um, you can see that there are some aspects that repeat uh, themselves, that they were key, the dissemination and participation uh, process, the involvement of private stakeholders in different uh, manner, the integral approach, but um, we, we would like to highlight the, the combination of these three plans and other plans that, that, we, that we are doing. We thought it was better to show you different examples instead of going in depth with, with one, because then you can see how important it is to have a vision. In this case, is that of the green metropolis metropolis that permeates the three three plants then the multiscalarity how we can work with one municipality with a group or, or all of them at the, at the same time and related to this need for a vision to work at different scales the importance of the metropolitan governance that allows us to work um, and to push the agenda further if it were just only one, one municipality. Uh, 
I, I apologize again for the technical problems. We hope, I hope we, we have a great uh, discussion and, and debate. And if there's further questions after the workshop, please don't, don't hesitate to contact us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Eugenia. Um, so a question from Martin here, uh, and this is something that I was wondering as well. Um, could you tell us a bit more about how you engaged with private landowners in the national park area? Well, uh, we we organize specific sessions with different stakeholders. In the case of uh, private owners, um, we we were lucky in the in the sense that. Um, for many years through the consortium, uh, we had uh, tried that the private owners organize themselves so that we don't talk like to uh, individual uh, owners, but we, we talk to an association of owners and this uh, consite. So while we were designing the, the plan, they were and they organized themselves in, in a organization and then we present the plan and, and they um, made uh, some comments and then we readjust uh, some proposals so th there was kind of dialogue and there were uh, two kinds I think of um, owners that we did two specific sessions with one was the agriculture uh, productors and the other were the owners of um, forest areas and farm houses. Sometimes uh, one owner could be like in both uh, organizations, but it was good because sometimes we have difficulties if you don't have um, uh, I don't know how to say it in English, like an interlocutor, like, like uh, an association. Yeah. Okay. And do you know what sort of proportion of the area is privately owned of that national park? Yes, it's uh, 60 percent. So forty okay. percent is owned by different public administrations. And when when I say uh, different. Uh, four or five and and then we have the private owner so it, it's very complex in ten, in terms of managing this this part. Yeah. okay thanks um do you enter any further questions you'd like to ask you jenya in the chat i had another question about that national park section as well eugenia um hmm. when you were talking about there being one zoning code what does that mean in practice Yes, it, it means that the, the old plan had several um, zoning codes. And the, the thing is that the, the plan lasts uh, over 40 years. And the zoning codes uh, correspond to the landscape and habitats that we had when it was approved. But after so many years, it, it didn't really make sense. So we we thought, and, and this was a, a key issue, and it was difficult to explain, but at the end, I think that we, we were able to, to convince. Uh, we prefer to simplify planning and to uh, designate the entire park with only one uh, zoning code, uh, and then to rely on other uh, instruments and to uh, try to have a more kind of adaptive uh, management. Okay, thank you. Uh, Rebecca, would you like to come on screen to ask your question at all? You should be able to click on a button to do that if you'd like. If not, I can ask the question. Okay, I'll ask Rebecca's question. Um, yes. Rebecca's wondering whether your plans for the green corridors might in, involve removal of any buildings at all. Uh, as far as I know, uh, no. It it uh, it means um, 
reurbanization and changing the section of uh, streets and, and roads so that there's less space for the car and there's more space for other modes of transportation and there's more space for greenery and um, this this but uh, in 750 kilometers um, uh, it could happen that we we need to remove um, some buildings but at the scale that we are working right now uh, i'm not able to answer the, the question yeah and what are the time scales for that that green corridors work do you know uh, well, it's not that um, it, it has to be done all at once. Uh, it's um, it'll be the idea is to be implemented uh, through time and the uh, horizon, the time horizon of the master plan is twenty years when it is approved. Yeah. But uh, we are already starting in some sections. And, We'll see. Okay. Laura, would you like to come on screen to ask your question? There should be a big blue button, I think, that allows you to share video or audio, whichever it is you, you or don't prefer. Okay, I'll ask Laura's as well. Um, Laura's asking, in relation to Colserola, um, do you have any kind of monitoring plans to see the evolution of the plan? Yes, we we have uh, designed uh, a set of uh, indicators, and then uh, there's a protocol on how these indicators uh, should be evaluated, and then how the management body, that's the um, consortium, should uh, complete these uh, indicators and, and work on and work on this. And then we we have been working with uh, uh, GIS uh, system and there's some uh, mapping uh, done that uh, have to be updated in, in in order to evaluate these indicators. So there's kind of yeah okay. Um, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit more about the, the details of the participation and how how you went about that and how long the process was. Was it a few months or a few years of, of um, engaging with different sectors of the community? Well, uh, I well, we decided to show you three different examples because um, we think first that there's no template. You were asking for some template, like everyone is different. And in terms of participation, everyone is different as well. First, uh, because the complexity and the scope of the, of the plan. And then I would think because the Pinta Verda is older, it was approved in 2015, the PEPNAT just recently, and the PDU is the future plan, and participation is something that it not, it was not in our genes. It's uh, as a public administration is something quite new, and, and I think we, we are uh, doing um, better every in every plan. We are learning and, and moving towards this this direction. For the Pinta Verda, it was mostly like a forum, a workshop, a couple of informative uh, events, and an exhibition. The PEPNAT, by law, we had to do one month, and just in a particular time of the drafting of the plan, we, we did uh, like uh, double, we, we did two months, and then not only once, but uh, we did it in the preliminary uh, ideas approved, we did it in the first draft, and we did it uh, afterwards. And mostly the participation was um, with um, open events where we would uh, explain the, the future plan and people will uh, have, uh, we will get some feedback from, from citizens, then with uh, key 
stakeholders and uh, then uh, through our web page as well people could uh, know about the plan and contribute with uh, their comments and, and, and thoughts and so on and then for the future master plan there's a huge effort uh, I'm sorry that most of the resources that I could provide uh, with are in Catalan, but in the case of the PDU, I think that part of it is in English as well. And, well, th there's... Um, it's very complex. Like, like there's... Uh, even before starting like the specific workshops, several exhibitions, uh, I think it's uh, quite remarkable the participation that we are doing with the future master plan. And what sort of level of engagement do you feel you got from, from people involved in the processes? Did you get a high level of participation or? We, we, we think we, we got a great level of participation, but um, in terms of the channels we use, uh, we thought, for example, that uh, with the web page would be uh, great because we will um, be able to reach to more, more people and really we didn't have many uh, feedback through this channel. And then with the in-person sessions in the park, in the consortium, uh, I think it was a big success. Uh, we, we, we got a quite big audience. And then um, the thing is that uh, certain um, users of the park uh, mobilized themselves more than others. So uh, people who were actually living in the park or the cyclists, um, users, they were uh, very active uh, and then um, th there's this difficulty in reaching out uh, everybody and, and trying to be inclusive that not, not only like certain voices uh, um, are able to, to participate. Yeah, and is, would that be the learning that you take away from that process then or are there other things that you would learn for for doing that again would yeah. you focus and do more of those kinds of events rather than focusing on kind of technology website approaches well i think we have to keep on um, trying all sorts of channels because uh, and then i think it's something uh, new for us as a public administration. It's a different approach. And I think it's new for society as well. So if we keep on doing this, I, I think now it's novelty, but then it will be expected and it will be different. And do you know do you, or do you have a sense of how much of this kind of thing is going on in other regions of Spain? I, I know of uh, some similar experiences in, in Madrid, uh, but uh, with the scope and scale of the future master plan, I don't know any other example. Has there been much attention on what you've been doing within Spain or mm -hmm. are people not so interested? <laughs> <laughs> I think that they will be interested once we get it approved, because right now it's a work in progress. So if all this uh, goes to a good end, I think uh, it will be uh, well known. Right now we, we are just working on, on this. Okay, so you feel like people are waiting to see mm -hmm. what comes of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Are there any other questions from the audience? Remember, you can enter in either the Q&A or the chat section. If you don't, oh, so Rebecca's asking how long has the project been underway already? Uh, which one? I guess that it means the future uh, master plan. 
Uh, well, uh, it started with some studies, uh, with a big exhibition, and then they were able to approve the preliminary ideas. Now uh, we, we are uh, aiming uh, to have the first uh, draft uh, approved. And I guess this is already uh, four or five years. It's, it's a long process. And part of it is with the participation, it took it takes much longer, but uh, we think that uh, at the end it will be a much better better plan, and uh, it will be more likely to have it approved. Uh, so we, I think it's a good investment in, in time and resources, but uh, yes, it's taking us very long. And with the PEPNAT, it took us very long as well. And has, has somebody had to approve the investment of those resources in this longer process then? How did that come about? Uh, well, when the, the, the plan has different documents and one of uh, these documents is the economic agenda. And then when it was approved, the, the administrations that approved them uh, compromises uh, themselves. To do the, the and is it the same people need to approve the plan when it's finished as well <laughs> yeah okay and any more questions from the audience we've just got a few minutes left if anyone would like to ask anything if you don't want to type you can just um offer to come on and ask your question verbally There should be a blue button that says share audio video. Any last questions for Eugenia? Okay, well, thank you, Eugenia. That's really interesting. Great to see such valuable work going on um, at multi scales. Um, I'm sure that's been very inspiring for people to hear about. Um, we will leave it there for the session and allow people to go and have a look at some of the expo booths or go into the networking section and have a chat with people there. See okay. what you can learn from other people in other sessions. And of course, Eugenia, you're very welcome to stay and. Um, listen to other things that are going on. Yes. You like. Thank I'm you. Forward. Thank you so much for the invitation. Lovely to Thank see you. Thank you very much.